Hi, welcome to our short videos on Ask the Expert, where we take up questions asked by our viewers and clients pertaining to the cybersecurity industry. Most of these questions that we take up are posted on our YouTube channel that you can see on your screen. Do subscribe to our channel, which is a treasure trove of informative content on various industry standards, compliance and governance. You can see the link on the screen and read the description below to learn more about it. Do subscribe and click on the bell icon so you get notified about our latest video updates. Today, we have taken up a very interesting and informative topic for those looking to achieve PCI DSS compliance. The topic for today that we have covered in our expert video includes PCI DSS compliance checklist and best practices you should be knowing. With this, let us understand how organizations can follow the PCI compliance checklist and implement best practices for attaining PCI DSS compliance. But before that, let us briefly understand the requirements of PCI DSS, which forms the basis for the compliance process. PCI DSS compliance requirement comprises of 12 requirements as outlined by the PCI Council. Let us see what these 12 requirements are. The 12 requirements are divided into six main categories of the PCI DSS compliance as mentioned below. So let us understand what these 12 requirements are. First one, which is build and maintain secure network. This includes installing and maintaining a firewall configuration to protect the cardholder data. It also includes not using vendor supplied defaults for system passwords and other security parameters. Moving on to the second requirement, which is protect cardholder data. This includes protect stored cardholder data within the environment. It also includes encrypting transmission of cardholder data across open and public networks. Moving on to the third one, which is maintain a vulnerability management program. This includes protecting all systems against malware, regularly updating antivirus softwares and other security programs. It also includes developing and maintaining secure systems and applications. The fourth requirement, which is implementing strong access control measures. This includes restricting access to cardholder data by business need to know basis. Identifying and authenticating access to system components. It also includes restricting physical access to cardholder data. Moving on to the fifth one, which is regularly monitor and test networks. This includes tracking and monitoring all access to network resources and cardholder data. It also involves regularly testing of security systems and processes within the organization. Finally, which is the sixth one, which is maintain an information security policy. Maintaining a policy that addresses information security for all personnel is essential in an organization. These are the 12 PCI DSS requirements briefly shared with you. However, if you wish to learn more about these 12 requirements in detail, you can check out our previous expert video on the 12 PCI DSS requirements on our YouTube channel. Now that we have understood the PCI DSS requirements, let us ensure that these requirements are met by following the compliance checklist that we have briefly described below. So prior to engaging with PCI qualified security assessors, it is essential that we ensure PCI DSS compliance checklists are followed. Here is a list that you must check off before undergoing an audit. The first one is update company policies, procedures and processes. So, before diving into the assessment stage, organizations must review and update their policies, procedures and processes to meet the compliance requirements. The second one, which is firewall implementation, monitoring and updates. This includes organization implementing and updating firewalls with latest patches and ensuring the overall maintenance of the software. 
third one which is vendor default password setting organizations must have in place policies that ensure vendor default passwords are changed and maintain an inventory of all system components fourth one which is protect card holder data this includes implementing strong security measures like encryption and pan masking fifth one which is encrypt data ensure that sensitive data in transition is encrypted using strong encryption protocols for both the private and public network moving on to the next one is antivirus software updates organizations must deploy antivirus softwares on all their hardware and software especially on personal computers and servers deploy secure hardware or software this involves installing vendor specific updates and security patches in a timely manner moving on to the next one which is access controls this involves implementing security access controls such as key cards pass codes biometrics to strengthen physical access controls the next one which is monitoring access this includes installing physical security equipment and also monitor access through equipments like cctv cameras and other surveillance technology the other most important one is the two factor authentication incorporating two factor authentication for any login systems to prevent the possibility of unauthorized access to sensitive information is crucial last but not the least which is penetration test and vulnerability assessment organizations must at least yearly or half yearly perform penetration test and vulnerability assessment at both network and application levels for quick detection and remediation of vulnerabilities now moving on to the best pci dss compliance practices this involves developing and maintaining sustainable security program organizations must develop and maintain a strong security program that is effective and ensures continued compliance with the standards organizations must develop policies procedures and processes developing a set of policies processes and proce procedures with assigned responsibilities ensures accountability within the organization this will also ensure continued compliance with applicable and necessary standards as required develop performance metrics to ensure success organization should be able to quantify their ability to sustain security practices and pci dss compliance by developing a set of metrics that summarizes the performance of the implemented security controls and the compliance programs in the organization organizations must also define and assign responsibilities establishing and assigning roles and responsibility ensures accountability this further ensures compliance with pci dss standard security and risk management to maintain compliance organizations must establish a security and risk management program by adopting an effective risk based approach to ensure continued compliance this should include conducting regular risk assessment prioritizing risk based on its severity and developing security programs which is based on industry and regulatory mandates monitoring the security controls within the organization this forms the fundamentals of the security compliance program this ensures compliance is by constantly monitoring the strategy and updating security controls such periodic reviews ensure efficiency and effectiveness of the defined security controls in place detect and respond to security control failures this is critical for organizations as they are able to detect failures in the security controls during the control review it is also imperative that organizations have processes for responding to such security control failures in a timely manner and those processes should be periodically tested 
maintain security awareness. Data breaches are not limited to the exploitation of technical vulnerabilities, but also involves the use of various social engineering techniques. So, regularly conducting security awareness programs to educate employees is crucial. Finally, monitoring third-party compliance program. Monitoring of the third-party compliance is essential part of PCI compliance program. Third-party service providers are equally responsible for the implementation and maintenance of security controls to meet the PCI DSS requirements. For this, defining the roles and responsibilities of the third party is essential for maintaining the compliance. Finally, evolve and upgrade the compliance program. The compliance and security program established should be regularly reviewed and upgraded as and when required to meet the growing requirements and to deal with the evolving threat landscape. This can only be achieved by regularly monitoring the effectiveness of the program and upgrading the program as per the evolving market scenario. With this, we end our very informative session on PCIDSS compliance checklist and best practices you should be knowing. Hope this video turns out to be useful to you and clears all your doubts. If you have any other interesting topics that you would like us to take up, then do drop us a mail and we will surely take it up in our upcoming videos. You can even share your valuable feedback with us and help us make this video more useful to you. Thank you. If you have any queries pertaining to the requirements of compliance checklist and best practices discussed, then do drop us a mail on askus at vistainfosec.com and we'd be more than happy to help you. Thank you.